Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. John Belkowitz here. It's a Q&A day, and I have an awesome question for you. Um, ding! So this one is from Ali Hamid. Uh, Ali asks the question, what are the consequences of high early strength? And I literally, literally had this conversation last night. So, you know, there are no uh, coincidences in life. And Ali, thank you for the amazing question. So the consequences of high early strength. Let's say we had a concrete that developed. Um, we, we work with a precaster and we have a concrete that develops strength in 10 hours. Let's say we're doing precast concrete panels, uh, panels for uh, bridge sections, a bridge deck. Um, uh, we, rip and we normally rip and strip our concrete in 8 and 10 hours. Um, but let's say we have a client who hires us a precaster and they want to take that eight to 10 hour time frame and reduce it down to one to two hours. And if you are in the business right away, you can understand the impact of going from, let's say 10 hours to one hour. What you effectively do is you give yourself another set of panels that you're creating in one day. So in one day, if you're creating 10 panels or let's say 100 panels if you're a large size precaster instead of creating the 10 or 100 now you're creating 20 or 200 with the same crew so you're really doubling your output in one day and there's a lot to be said for i'll include whatever add mixture additive that i have to to get to that point so what could possibly be wrong with that and you know the harsh reality is to get the the strengths that you need to rip and strip at one hour, excuse me. What you need to do is kick off a lot of chemical reactions. Um, and they, those chemical reactions need to happen fast. And what end up, uh, ends up going on is you have this extremely high temperature output. Um, you're, you're, you're increasing the concrete temperature not only increasing when the temperature kicks off with that acceleration period you know if you look at your uh, temperature temperature versus time chart normally with concrete you look something like this well what we want to do is take this portion right here and shift it forward unfortunately when we end up doing that we end up increasing this peak temperature here now, we've done a, a few videos on thermal shock and how the thermal kinetics of cement hydration, delta T, and when we look at thermal shock and the, sh the cracking, the shrinkage and cracking that manifests from that, we look at a 35 degree temperature swing, 30 to 35 degree temperature swing. And most of the concretes, what we're doing, where we're taking it from 10 hours to one hour, you know, you can see temperatures from, you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, that's the thermal kinetics of cement hydration. So what you can see is uh, twofold. One, the sample could be excessively hot, too hot to handle, especially for production, which I guess you can get past that with gloves or just equipment. But the second thing that is so important is because you have that heat, especially when you expose the sample, you pull it out of its mold, you might have not only rapid evaporation loss, but if you have that delta T greater than 35 degrees, and let's say it's a it's a, a fall day, it's 70 degrees in the plant, and your concrete's 140 degrees Fahrenheit, that's doubling that delta T. What you end up happening is rapid evaporation loss, rapid uh, volume change, and a cracking ensues. We've actually pulled out two by fours that were 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 degrees in the lab, and holding them in your hand or putting them on the, uh, the uh, testing table you can watch these samples crack, just start cracking because of that evaporation, because of that volume change, because of that restraint, and because that those residual stresses overcome the tensile and shear capacity of the hydrated cement matrix, you see that catastrophic failure. So these things can be overcome, but normally they're overcome by using other admixtures and additives, and there's always a balance in how to get those early temperature or early strengths uh, without, um, you know, the issues that, that, that arrive from that delta T from those high temperatures, that rapid evaporation loss, and of course, that shrinkage. So uh, 
Hopefully you learned something. Let me know if you have any other concrete questions and concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete! Peter Fart!